Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. August 19th, 2016, RetroPie 4.0 is released and I'm super excited for this release. There are tons of fixes, tons of changes, and tons of improvements. Today, I want to show you how to install RetroPie 4.0 on your Raspberry Pi. So let's get started here. It's going to be super simple and you're going to be up and running your favorite old school games in no time. First thing we're going to need is an SD card and an SD card reader. If you're using this on a desktop and you don't have an SD card reader, you're going to have to go out and buy a USB one or an internal reader, whatever your choice is. I'm using a standard 32 gigabyte class 10 SD card. Very cheap on Amazon. You can get them a dime a dozen nowadays. You can actually use an 8 gigabyte, but I have a 32 gigabyte free and I want to use that one. Now it's time to download the software we're going to need to install RetroPie. So go ahead and open up a browser of your choice. I use Chrome. It's just easier for me and it works really well on my computer. We're going to head over to retropie.org.uk. All the links will be in the description, so don't worry about that. If you're installing this on a Raspberry Pi Zero or a Raspberry Pi One, you're going to need to download this version here. For the Pi Two and the Pi Three, you're going to need this version. In this demo, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3. I suggest for maximum performance using a Pi 2 or a Pi 3 anyway. You'll click on this. So the download is close to 600 megabytes. Just wait for it to download. And while we're waiting for that to download, we're going to need to get Win32 Disk Imager. What this is going to allow us to do is flash the RetroPie image that we're downloading now to the SD card so it'll run on the Raspberry Pi. This is very safe. There are no viruses, no malware built in. There's 81,000 downloads this week alone. If you do get a virus warning, it's probably a false positive, and you need to go ahead and think about switching your antivirus company. Avast, Windows Defender, and Norton usually are pretty bad. In my opinion, I use malware bytes, and I've never had trouble. So download that here. It'll take a second. It'll download very quickly for you, Win32 Disk Imager. You'll need to install it when it's done downloading. And then one other thing we're going to need, now this is just for the afterthought. After you flash your SD card with the RetroPie image and you place it back into your computer or your phone or a camera, it's not going to register as the full capacity of the SD card. It will only register as 56 megabytes to about 200 megabytes. That's because it's flashed in a different format. We can use SD card formatter to restore that card to its stock capacity. I recommend downloading this. You can download it here. You'll need to install it. Very simple. No malware. I have used this for years now. So now that we have RetroPie 4.0, Win32 Disk Imager, and like I said, you might want to download SD formatter also. If you are using a SD card that is larger than 64 gigabytes, I will also leave a link for GUI format. Now you need to be careful when using this. It will format your SD card if it's over 64 gigabytes. Sometimes SD card formatter doesn't do a good job. So to bring your card back to stock capacity, use GUI formatter. There is a link in the description. Very easy. You just download it and run it. Make sure you have the correct drive letter chosen. All right, so we're going to need to extract the RetroPie 4.0 image. Right click, extract RetroPie 4.0. It's going to extract it to my desktop. Now I use WinRAR. You can also use 7-Zip. I'll leave a link to WinRAR in the description so you can get that if you need it. So now we have a folder with RetroPie 4.0, RPI 2 underscore RPI 3. If you've downloaded this for the zero, it will look different. It will look RPI 0 or RPI 1. The disk image is close to 2 gigabytes and it should be a disk image file. We're going to need to find the drive letter of the SD card that we want to flash and you can do that by opening up a file browser. And down here mine is 32 SD and it's drive E. Just make sure you know the drive letter. Mine's drive E and it's a cleared out SD card. So let's go ahead and flash the image to our SD card. We'll open up Win32 Disk Imager. Now this is very simple. 
as long as you know how to use it. And I'm going to show you right now. It's very, very easy to use. Over here in the drop down is your device menu. Most of the time, this will only see USB drives and SD cards. I just showed you that my drive letter is E, so I'm going to make sure E is chosen here under the device tab. I'm going to click on the blue folder icon and navigate to my desktop where I have my RetroPie 4.0 image file. Like I said, mine's on my desktop, RetroPie, and we need to double click on the disk image file that we extracted. From here, we're just going to click right. What it's going to do is write it to the SD card and we're almost done. We're almost ready to take that SD card out of the computer, place it into the Raspberry Pi and boot it up for the first time. Okay, the write was successful. It's time to take the SD card out of our PC, place it into the Raspberry Pi. We're also going to need a controller or a keyboard connected to the Raspberry Pi. We're going to power the Pi up and boot up RetroPie for the first time. We're moving to the Raspberry Pi now. All right, on your first initial boot, you may have seen a blue screen at first that says resizing file system. Perfectly normal. It'll run through a few lines of command, possibly reboot once, and then we'll be prompted with this screen here as long as we have a controller or keyboard connected to the Raspberry Pi. This is very self-explanatory. It's detected one gamepad. I am using a PS3 controller. It's wired at the moment. And I will show you how to set up Bluetooth on your PS3 controller in the next video. Right now we're gonna set up this controller. So go ahead and hold the A button on your controller and just map these accordingly. And when you get to the OK, press the A button that you mapped on your controller Okay, so after you've set up your controller, you'll be presented with the emulation station front end. As you see in the new RetroPie 4.0, there are no emulators listed on the front end here. I like this, it makes it a lot cleaner. But the reason we installed RetroPie on our Raspberry Pi in the first place is to play some really cool, awesome, old school retro games. That's what we're gonna do now. This video, so I will be making more videos and they'll be coming very shortly. I will create a playlist. In this video, I just wanted to show you how to install RetroPie and transfer ROMs to your Raspberry Pi using a USB stick. What we're going to do is leave our Raspberry Pi running. Leave it on the screen just like this. Do not unplug it. We're going to go back to the PC. We need a USB stick. 1 gig, 2 gig, 3 gig, 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, whatever gigs you got. It's going to work for you. Let's go back to the PC now. We're gonna set up our USB stick. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to transfer some ROMs to your Raspberry Pi using a USB stick. This is very simple. You're just gonna need a clean USB stick formatted FAT32. We go here to format, FAT32. It's an eight gigabyte USB 2.0 drive. I'll just format it again really quick. Format complete. From here, We'll just open up the USB stick that we have, right click. We need to create a new folder inside of here and name it RetroPie. Press enter. So inside of this RetroPie folder that we just created, there's nothing here. What we need to do now is take the USB drive out of the computer, place it into the Raspberry Pi, wait anywhere from a minute to five minutes. The best thing would be to have a light on your USB drive so you can see when it stops flashing. What it's gonna do is create folders inside of here. It's gonna create a ROMs, BIOS, and a configs folder inside of here for us automatically. We're gonna place our ROMs in our corresponding ROMs folder. I'm gonna take the USB stick out now. So here's my Raspberry Pi. I have my freshly formatted USB stick. I'm just going to shove it right in here and we're going to wait for this to stop flashing. Now it could take a little while. Just be patient. I would definitely wait a few minutes. We see the constant flashing. It's writing the folders inside of the RetroPie folder that we created now. 
So my USB stick is done flashing. I'm gonna take it out of the Raspberry Pi and place it back into the computer. So that RetroPie folder we created on the USB stick, when we open it now, you'll see BIOS, configs, and ROMs folder in here. Our BIOSes go in here and our ROMs go in here. I'm just gonna snap this over to the side. Now I have my ROMs located on my desktop. I'll open my ROMs folder on my USB stick. So if we wanna place some SNES ROMs, we'll take SNES and we'll find some SNES ROMs to drag over to the USB stick. Just drag a few over. Go back on both of these folders here. Now this is still the USB stick over here. Open up ROMs and we will transfer some, a PlayStation 1 game. Now with the PlayStation 1, we also need a BIOS in our BIOS folder on our USB drive. So I'll go to my PlayStation games and I'll just do Tekken 3 here. Okay, Tekken 3 is now on my USB drive. We need to go back to BIOS because we need the PlayStation 1 BIOS also. And I'll find my PSX BIOS, SCPH1001.bin, drag it to my BIOS folder on my USB drive. Now you can go ahead and load this USB drive up as much as you'd like. There's tons of emulators. You just need to put the games in the corresponding ROM folder. So what we need to do now is take the USB stick back out of the PC, place it into the Raspberry Pi, allow the ROMs to transfer. Now depending on how many ROMs you put on, it could take anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes. Right now I'm only transferring a few ROMs. It's still going to take a bit because I have a PlayStation 1 game which is close to 500 megabytes. So I'll take the USB stick out of the computer. I'm going to place it into the Raspberry Pi and just wait a little while. I'm just waiting for this USB drive to stop flashing. When it's done flashing, I'll reboot the Raspberry Pi one time. And if we're lucky and we did everything correctly, we should see our emulators on the front end here. I only transferred SNES games and one PlayStation 1 game. So the only emulators that I will see when these are done transferring and I reboot are SNES and PlayStation 1. After you've waited a few minutes, like I said before, it could take a little bit of time depending on how many ROMs you have because it's going to take them off of the USB stick and place them onto your SD card automatically we'll need to reboot one time, and you can do that by pressing start on your controller, scroll down to quit, and restart emulation station. After I restart, we should see SNES and PlayStation 1 on the front end here. You can remove your USB stick right now if you'd like. These games will be running from the SD card. So as you can see, I now have SNES and PlayStation listed here. You can start playing your games now. There are tons of emulators. I will be making more videos. In my next few videos for RetroPie 4.0, I will show you how to transfer ROMs over network, which is the way I like to do it. I just transfer them directly from my computer to the Raspberry Pi as long as they're connected to the same network. I'll also show you how to set up your Bluetooth PS3 controller and configure some of the obscure emulators that don't work right offhand. But before I get out of here, we'll just make sure this PlayStation 1 game does work. And it was Tekken 3. We'll just launch it here. And we are now playing PlayStation 1 on our Raspberry Pi. It's very simple and it works very well. And you see it's super smooth. You can exit the emulator by pressing start and select at the same time. That will bring you back to the emulation station front end. If you guys could hit that like button and subscribe because it really helps me out. I have a ton of videos coming for RetroPie 4.0. I've been waiting a long time for 4.0 to be released. If you have any requests at all, let me know in the comments below. 
And make sure to check out my channel because I have tons of Raspberry Pi, Retro Pi, Emulation Station, Recall Box videos on my channel. And a lot of the questions that are going to be asked in the comment section are probably already answered in one of the videos on my channel. Like always, thanks for watching.